He's saying you want to truly be great. You want to truly be great. Be someone who serves others. Be someone who serves others. And then he makes a stronger statement. He says, whosoever you will be the chiefest. All right, so so if you want to be great, be a servant. You want to be the greatest? You want to be the goat? (laughs) Be the servant, or the word here is slave. Be the slave of all. That's a whole lot different than asking to be vice president. (laughs) Be the slave of all? What he's saying is, if you want to be the greatest, make yourself lowest. And then he says this, for even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, came not to be served, but to minister, to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And Jesus is the greatest. Jesus humbly had our sin and the wrath of the Father placed on himself. Jesus bore that burden and lowered himself. And then he resurrected the greatest. They have no idea what they're asking about. So a super cool part is that in light of this teaching and in light of what Jesus went on to do, he he demonstrated what this actually looked like and then he resurrected from the grave and then they're given the gift of the Holy Spirit and John and the other disciples through seeing the rest of what happened in Jesus' life and through the power of the Holy Spirit... Learn this lesson finally. They fi- hey, there's hope for us in this room, okay? <laughs> the stuff that you feel like you're having a hard time getting or having a hard time applying to your life, through the Holy Spirit, we can get there eventually. We can get there. Because John, who at one point was saying, can I be vice president? Can I be up high ranking official? is the same John who went on to write 1 John 3.16 where it says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because He laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. He's not saying, Wow, Jesus is really awesome, so we should be awesome too. Let's go after it. Like, no. <laughs> he said, no, He died, so we should be willing to die. Instead of trying to be the greatest among the twelve, John humbled himself and learned to serve his brothers and sisters, even if it meant death. And in Acts, we learn that instead of pursuing position, that the apostles rejoiced at an opportunity to suffer for Jesus. It says in Acts chapter 5 that they had called the apostles and beaten them. They commanded they should not speak in the name of Jesus. And they let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for His name. You can't help but think of the teaching that we just read. You want to have greatness? You must be willing to drink of this cup. Be baptized with this baptism. And when some of these apostles got to drink some of that cup of persecution, they're like, yes! This is what greatness looks like. Jesus told us about this. We got to suffer. He suffered for us. He took what we couldn't take. He took the cup of wrath upon Himself. And now we're counted worthy to suffer for Him. This is awesome. This is greatness. We don't think like this. (laughs) This is so contrary to our idea of anything. (laughs) We seek comfort. We fight for it. We die for comfort. Here they are rejoicing. They got to be persecuted for Jesus. And I don't mean like 
that fake persecution stuff where someone sets themselves up like, look, I've been persecuted. <laughs> no, really legitimately persecuted for Jesus.